Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there is an overall message. You know, we we did not play any of us, coaching staff, players. You know, we could have played so much better in that game. And um, obviously, there were opportunities uh, to get off. You know, and that's that happens in two minute drives. If you ask what what a message is, you know, we've from the beginning of training camp since in a two minute drive. If you have a dropped interception, if you have a chance to get off the field, a penalty, something that causes you to extend a drive, nine times out of ten, bad things happen. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know what it is, but if you, if you go back in history of football and you watch how many times there's been a dropped interception at the beginning of a two-minute drive and the offense goes down and scores, or in this case, you know, an interception with a penalty that got wiped away. Um, and, you know, we've been on, on the good end of a, a lot of good finishes and it would, it's, it's tough to be on the, the wrong end of it. Um, you know, there are some, some calls in that drive that I'd like to have back and I, I told the guys and they know that, and, uh, there are some plays that they would like to have back, but that's, that's football and you can't get them back. And so now we've got to, uh, we've got to learn from it. You know, like coach said, you've got to learn from the scars. Uh, and you got to grow from them. And obviously, we've got a, a huge, huge test this week. And if we get put in that same situation this week, uh, you know, I'm confident that that our guys will, uh, you know, be able to to rise up to the challenge. Great. Obviously, Sentiment has a lot of really good players around him. But what makes him so effective using those guys? I, he is playing at an extremely high level right now. I, I'm. Quite frankly, really surprised that, you know, he hasn't had much, you know, Heisman buzz. Like, he is playing at that kind of level. Um, he does not get the credit that he deserves in terms of uh, his command of the offense, his ability to distribute all over the field, his ability to create with his legs, um, you know, check coverages, you know, check plays on certain coverages, looks. He knows where to go with the ball. He's been in the offense, you know, as long as he has. So he, he's in, in real command back there. Uh, he makes the right reads. And so he's, he's, he's playing as well as, you know, anybody. He's, you know, the best quarterback probably we've faced all, all year. Um, and no disrespect to anybody, but just his, his command, obviously. Uh, Hooker's playing at an extremely high level, so... Uh, he's he's done great there as well. So again, it's no disrespect to anybody. More of a how well he is playing at quarterback right now. Right, your outside backers have to deal with these guys in particular. But where does that duo of tight ends rank against guys you've faced kind of over the years? Uh, yeah, I mean this is as good of a tight end group as you're going to find in college football. I mean their uh, their ability to. I think everybody sees their ability to to make plays in the passing game. You know, and you see uh, Bauer's ability to do a lot of different things, you know, catch bubble screens, take fly sweeps, do do those. But they're also really willing blockers and and they're able to move guys off the ball and they're really deep, um, you know, and, you know, with Bowers and Washington and Delph and, you know, uh, Gilbert. I mean, the, the whole group, you know, is you know, any one of those four could could be a starter on any you know program in the country. So. Um, yeah, obviously they, they create uh, mismatches, you know, in terms of their ability to uh, create space with speed, uh, be able to, at the point of attack, you know, create separation with their size uh, and then go up with their length, you know. So uh, it allows, you know, Stetson to throw it up and away. They'll go get it. They've got great hands, really, really soft. Um, and so... Yeah, obviously a, a big challenge for us, but they, they've got weapons all over the place. How hard is Justin's like uh, experience against so many different defenses at his age, uh, playing pretty much seeing everything uh, compared to some of the younger quarterbacks you guys have faced this year? Yeah, I think that. I mean, and you know, back to my time when I was in Indy. You know, when you when you face the the Rodgers and the Brady's and the Breezes, like that's. That's part of what makes those guys so special is their mind, you know, their ability. They've seen so much, and uh, Stetson's seen 
everything thrown at him. And he's, you know, he's able to, to process through it uh, and put the ball in the right spot, put it, give it to the, uh, to the right person, the right playmaker. And um, that, that's, that's a real challenge. And, you know, you've got, we've got to try to do a good job of, uh, you know, you say, give him something he hasn't seen. He's probably seen most things over the last three years. So, uh, but we just have to do it really fundamentally sound. And, and play at a high level, play with great energy. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, they're going to make, you know, plenty of plays, but uh, we have to just continue to, you know, to continue to fight, um, you know, and make plays of our own to, to give us a chance. How's big? How big is the challenge going to be up with the one on one? They play a lot of uh, man. <clears throat> well, they play a lot of man because it, it is offense. But the, how big of a challenge is it for you all to uh, to to match up? Yeah, right. yeah, you know, it, that's. Hey, listen, you, you're going to have to, they're going to be down, so guys are going to be put in one-on-one -on -one situations, you know, against some really, you know, talented players receiver-wise, uh, tight end-wise, running back-wise, um, you know, O-line, D-line. Their O-line's really, you know, big and strong and physical, and it wears on you throughout a game, so our, our D-line's got to continue to to play strong and, and firm and sturdy throughout. Um, so... Yeah, I mean it's a it's a huge challenge, um, but that's that's why you come to this conference for those big challenges. And uh, you know, if we want to continue to to push the program and elevate the program, these are the kind of teams that you know when you got the opportunity, they come into your house and uh, in, in front of our fan base who who can get loud and rowdy, and you get a you know 3:30 CBS game. I mean, this you, you got to elevate, and, and all of us do. You know, it's. I, I think Coach Monken does an unbelievable job uh, from a scheme standpoint. Uh, the way he calls his plays, the way he packages his plays, uh, how he can get everybody involved. It's a, it's a huge, you know, challenge for us as a, as a defensive staff and, you know, uh, you know, two coordinators going after it, you know, going back and forth. And so uh, we, we all have, we all have to rise up. Frank, how would you assess JJ's season as a whole? Yeah, you know what? It's. I think he's played uh, really well in spurts. Um, I thought, you know, before the injury, he was playing at an extremely high level, and obviously he had a sort of sort of work back into confidence uh, level. I thought he played a good game against Vanderbilt. Like I think um, that's the the thing about when you lose, you like you lose perspective on guys that, that did play well. When you think about a Justin Rogers that made nine like you don't see that from a nose tackle that played really well. Um, I thought JJ played really well, you know, and he's getting the confidence back sort of in that arm. And it listen, it's hard to pass rush one arm. I, I think people lose facts and lose sort of sight of that. And um, and when you're not necessarily 100%, like, you know, uh, but I think every week he gets, you know, stronger and stronger uh, and, and more comfortable with that. And, um, you know, but we need we need our pass rush to continue to, to elevate. I asked Rich this earlier in the year. When you're coming off a game like Saturday where you're not happy with the performance, are you, how do you react to that? Do you lie in bed awake at night going over those calls or do you, are you pretty good at shaking it off and moving on to the next next opponent? Yeah, I, uh, I, I lie awake, you know, win, lose, you know, <laughs> it, that doesn't matter. Um, but no, I think you just, you have to, to shake it off. I mean, does, to say it doesn't sting, you know, then I don't think you're a competitor. I mean, that it's got to, anytime you lose, it has to fuel you. Um, but if you let it, get you down if it if it it changes your mood if it like you know that affects the players they see that and you. you've got to continue to uh to stay positive and you know it's i think it, it shows also in your ability to put the next game plan together you know it, it has to fuel uh you that next week that okay i'm gonna be better this you know hey listen maybe it's not you know, more calls and maybe less calls and maybe, 
different style calls. Hey, what can I do to put them in better position this week? And um, as a coach, you can sit there and you can look at all the plays and say, well, if you if they had done this and they had done this and then like this should have been a great call. Well, maybe it's too hard for all those pieces to come together. And so that's really on the call. Um, and, and so uh, I try to be, you know, really critical of myself, you know, and you know, hopefully that that helps with the next game plan, that it, it can make it easier, make the guys play faster, looser, whatever the case may be. And, um, and that's the big thing this week. They got to play confident. They got to play fast. They got to play loose and, uh, and let it hang out. You know, when you play really tough competition, the last thing you need to do is play tight. Do you sense you that you're embracing the challenge and the fuel that you mentioned? Do you get that? Yeah, I, I mean, it's been, I think it's been a really good week of practice. I think they've had, you know, really good energy uh, bounced around. They're focused. Um, but we've said it before, I, I, like, I've been around game weeks where it felt like that was the best week of practice we ever had, and we played poor on Saturday. I've been around weeks where I thought it was the worst week of practice, and they played great. Like, some, hey, listen, when, when you're in a profession and it's 18 to 22 year old kids, and uh, they got a lot going on in their life, and you know, different things happen. And and the goal is to, it, it happens in the NFL. There's only been one undefeated team in the NFL. In all the years in the NFL, one team that only ran the whole thing. Because it's hard to sustain consistency over and over and over. And especially with uh, everything that, that these young men have to deal with on a daily basis, you know, you can message and you can preach, and um, but it's hard to keep focus. It's hard for adults to keep, you know, focus. Uh, and so that's that's our job, you know, as coaches. We got to do a good job of keeping focus and, and blocking out noise. And, um, but that's what Coach Stoops has done such a good job of here to me is that he's built that that ability to to rely on culture, on team, to be able to a shelter in in the facility and trust that we all got each other's backs. In certain down and distance situations, is it, are you nervy about putting your team in a zero blitz, so to speak? Say that again. Certain am I, am I nervy? Are you nervy about putting your team will in a zero blitz? Will I call some zero blitz? blitz? Yeah. Uh, I have in the past. <laughs> you know. Will you call more, Brad? Will I call more? Yeah, and we'll, certain we'll down and distance. <laughs> <laughs> In what specific yeah, situations? Yeah, like, we'll, we'll, we'll page two of this. <laughs> <laughs> you can give me Coach Monken's down and distance tennis. Uh, that'd uh. be good. <laughs> Everybody good? All right, thank you. Thanks. How was that for uh, You know, I'm taking it day by day with my injury, my elbow injury. So it's just getting strong and fast and really just trying to trust it back. So, can you tell the difference now? Yeah, most time? definitely. Uh, then uh, Missouri, that's when I feel back comfortable with it, actually striking with it. Then last game, uh, I played a good game, you know, trying to get all my teammates together against Vanderbilt. But I think I played an amazing game against Vanderbilt. Did you feel lack of enthusiasm on the bench during the, during the uh, Vanderbilt game for the, for the players? Uh, yeah, at first, and then everybody started getting cold. You feel me? Everybody started being around each other trying to warm up. So. I think this week we need to right, forget being cold. Come on now, like, be man out here. So you're going to get cold. So that's all I guess I say. What do you see when you put on a film and look at those two big tight ends you'll get to face this week? Uh, even physical. That's it. That's got to be more physical than them. Is that like a point of emphasis, JG, this week, is just having more juice, whether on the sideline or in pregame or whatever, just being ready to, ready to go from the jump? Yeah, most definitely. Just having juice, you know. It's number one team. Like, if you're not fired up to play them, who know what you need in your system to get you fired up to play the number one team in America. So, what's the mood of the defense? What did you guys say to each other after the Vanderbilt game? Next play, next game, you know. Competition, next game. So, we Sunday, you know, we took the took the like we view it. All right, this is what we need to do. Execute this play and stuff like that. So Monday we just stepped on. Now we focus on Georgia.
I said you got high all the time this week. Mm -hmm. you know, every game next week means a lot to you. Yeah, you, know, that. I, you feel like you all still have a lot to play for. You know, if you haven't hit the goals, then you won't. Too much, too much. We're still trying to go to the great goal. So that's a still fight. Go to a good goal, place one more, and be out of this goal. Sure. <laughs> You've matched up with Bowers a few times before. Mm -hmm. I think what we what like about him just as a competitor on the other side of the line. He's aggressive. Uh, just got, I just got to be more aggressive. He finesse. So uh, once you be finesse, I just got to look into it. Just don't look in the back. Just look at him when I play him. So, but Bowers, he's a great receiver. He's a, he's a receiver. So I get him. He's a great guy, great player. Anybody else? Am I good? All right. Working for you the last few weeks. Um, I really focus on doing things to all season. I'm really starting to get more, more reps I've been getting. It's kind of starting to come along more better for me. I feel more comfortable inside. And just having fun with it also makes it so much better. You feel comfortable with that nickel spot versus oh, yeah. playing corner? I feel, <laughs> I feel so comfortable that I can't even explain it. I mean, I love the transition I made to it. So I can still play outside, but I'm going to do it inside also. Did you go into it thinking it would be an easy transition, or has it been easier than you thought? Um, you know, uh, it's also it was going to be a transition. I knew that just because the different uh, route tree in the slot. But you know, I just trusted the process and let time and reps get me more comfortable, and that's all that's happened. Pretty enormous challenge this weekend, to say the least. How do you guys embrace it? Is that do you look at it as opportunity or? Oh yeah, this is mindset. This is definitely an opportunity for us. I mean, with going in and facing the number one team, which they have proven on film to be worth the number one spot. I mean, I love our team. I know we can go out there and compete and just, you know, try to grind out this win. You're a guy who might have to match up with some of those tight ends in the mm -hmm. coverage this week. What do you see from those guys on film? You know, they are, they're both, I think, the two tight ends, 19 and 0. Um, they are great. You know, they're block, great blockers as well as wild runners. And it's just, you know, We've all just been studying what they do and what they're best at and just trying to work on all of that. What's been the mood of the defense as a whole coming off that Vandy game where Coach White said he, he wasn't happy with himself, he wasn't happy with some of the plays? What's been the mood of you guys? I mean, I'm sure it was like that for like that day, but since then it's been put that behind us and let's get ready for Georgia.